You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, National Financial Columnist and Financial Color Commentator. This week on The Biz, the Asset Protection Series. And on today's show, Directors and Officers Liability Insurance with National Columnist and Attorney at Law, Ike Devji. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain, and day four, all that is asset protection with attorney Ike Devji. Hey, Ike. Thank you, Steve. Welcome to the show again, and we're talking about today, this is a big one. And I, I was going to use it yesterday, but this show, this may take the whole show, just it, depending upon how much we talk about it. It could. Directors and officers liability. I, everybody wants to be an officer. Everybody wants to be a director. It sounds big. It has importance to it. It actually maybe has some political clout. But there's also economic liability if something goes south. Let's talk about what the basics of it, because I really want to unpack this today on our show, because this is another avenue in to corporate thinking for business success. While you're doing it, you're trying to get in for business succession. You're trying to get into estate planning. But sometimes these issues are the issues that give you an entree into a business or a big corporation. So talk about directors and officers liability at the basic level. Give me an introduction. You bet, Stephen. And your comment is very astute. The kind of people that we work with and that we all want to work with, especially given economic conditions, are substantially more concerned with loss than growth right now. So advisors who are educated and have the kind, these kinds of solutions are really mm -hmm. doing the best service and getting the most attention. Uh, directors and officers insurance is something that is one of the commonly overlooked areas that is easy to address. I think part of the problem, especially on the consumer side, is the lack of a clear mental conceptual distinction between directors and officers insurance or D&O insurance and their E&O coverage or mm. professional malpractice coverage that, for instance, a physician might have in place. And people don't understand that those cover very specific things and also have a very specific list of exclusions. D&O coverage is directors and officers coverage that applies to C-level executives, board members, uh, owners of closely held businesses who are the de facto executive making de important business decisions. And those business decisions often have uh, um, either legal liability and mm. compliance issues, or they may have uh, exposure through service on a board. And it's not always a business board. In some cases, it's a board of a private or charitable foundation that creates the same exposure. Well, when I think about it, uh, America, we have a, it, it, maybe if we don't have the high-end board of directors, it seems like everybody's an officer of a company of some sort. That's so, exactly correct. So, so when we're talking about the liability, I always thought, well, this is the corporate liability, the, actually the, the insulation, right? The first firewall, that should take care of it. But you're saying now they're coming to the people who make the decisions for the corporation and they may have a personal liability to this. That's absolutely correct. Well, and that, I, why that, doesn't it, well, why doesn't the original insulation, the normal entity, you know, kind of firewall insurance protection protect me personally? Because I think the insurance companies, for one, need to limit the scope of their exposure. And as we discussed in previous segments, to think that writing one or two checks a year is going to provide you coverage mm -hmm. for anything that could happen up to any dollar amount is not a realistic view of the business model at play. I think that insurance in all of its forms is an essential first line of defense and it is part of the questionnaire that we run every client through as asset protection only attorneys. But we've got to understand exactly what each of those things does. Mm -hmm. And this becomes more and more important for people who especially own uh, or own either uh, sole proprietorships where they own the entire corporation mm -hmm. uh, in whatever corporate form it may be, or are part of a closely held corporation. Remember that fewer people in the, few, in the food chain of executive decision making each of whom makes a wider range of important decisions that carry different levels of legal liability means more blame and more risk for every single one of those officers and directors. It's, a, it's amazing to me when we think about it. I think we've looked at it very small. 
and now you're exposing, or actually you're expanding our view on insurance coverage for directors and uh, officers. Now, when I think about that, again, uh, going back to my original thought, since my normal corporate insurance isn't really going to protect my personal liability, talk to me about how do I get that kind of personal liability taken care of by a DNO, right? And that has nothing to do with my ENO. That that's important. That distinction is important. So DNO coverage is the coverage that protects you for the decisions you make as an executive officer, director, board member, whatever the exact title is in that capacity. To give you a specific example, in one recent case, I had a client referred to me by his insurance advisor who said that this gentleman has a number of moving pieces, is a high net worth business owner, owns three or four different businesses, and I think he needs both legal asset protection planning, the tools that we use, and DNO coverage. This gentleman had a dispute with one of his business partners uh, on the way that some of the corporate affairs were handled. That dispute ended up costing this individual $250,000 in legal defense fees alone that would have been covered by DNO insurance. $250,000 because of a single dispute. Absolutely. Now that was just the mm -hmm. cost of the defense and didn't include any actual award. Mm -hmm. Pennies on the dollar for this insurance? Absolutely. Pennies on the dollar compared to the risk or the cost of defending yourself. I think when we look at it, because we're, we're a business insurance zone, we actually understand risk. We, uh, we usually look at it mortality, morbidity. Now we're talking about property casualty. We're talking about property. We're talking about personal liability. We're just coming to the table because everything in our environment has moved us up into litigation. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue our discussions on DNO and some other critical flaws that we've seen most common. And don't forget, you can enroll in IULUniversity.com for the best training, education, and sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Ike Debji. And remember, you can sign up for our order today's support materials at our own website at thebiz.tv. And just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, especially this whole week, always touch your tax advisor and also make sure that you're touching your base with your counsel. <laughs> now I have to talk about attorneys, wow. And if you're FINRA licensed, your broker dealer compliance department. All these people you need to have a relationship with because when we're into this area, we're into legalese and we need an attorney to talk this way. We can't just go out on our own. And now we're talking about not only a little bit more on DOL, but we're gonna talk later on this segment about common fatal flaws in regular coverage. I just, it amazes me all these things that are happening today. Ike, talk a little bit about people who serve on boards because people serve on charities, they serve on regular school boards, there's a lot of different boards and everybody thinks that this sitting there is a benign scenario. You're absolutely correct, Steve, and, and that the threat that these things uh, pose I think is greatly underestimated by both the public and advisors who don't see it from the position we do where something bad happens. So it could be something as simple as service on an HOA board that compromises your client's financial plans it could be service on the board of a charitable organization, a private foundation. We've even seen people sued for service on the board of a church, synagogue, or mosque, where someone in the congregation or a group of people have a disagreement with how the board handled, in most cases, the allocation of the funds at play. And if you were to, for instance, serve on the board of your church and had a lawsuit, would you want to have to defend that personally? Would you mm. want to have to write that check? If you were on the board of a charitable foundation, um, would you want to have to write that check? And in most cases, the answer is no. Not only do you not want to, you don't have to. 
Well, let's just go back on the charity because that kind of touched me right away and says, including HOAs. We're just helping people here. We're just sitting on the board. And now you're telling me I might have exposure. Shouldn't everybody that's sitting on any of these boards look into, if they're going to really participate, they really need to look at the insurance to really protect that issue. I mean, that's a big issue to me. You are absolutely correct, Steve. Um, and I'll give you a specific example. You're familiar with, of course, NFL uh, legend Jim McMahon. Oh, yeah. Well, poor Jim McMahon serves on the board of a bank in the Midwest. The board of that bank is currently being sued for bad loans issued by the bank to the tune of about $120 million. Jim and the other members of that board of directors are being held jointly and severally liable for those bad loans. Do you think poor old Jim McMahon ever personally looked at a single loan app? Never. Absolutely not. Well, I mean, Why I'm do assuming. we put, I'm, and I'm assuming so too, but why would we put a high-profile ex-NFL player on the board of directors of an organization like that? Mm -hmm. Well, the PR is huge, uh, let's just say that. That's exactly it. It's to attract people. It's because guys like you and me want to sit next to Jim McMahon, see the ring, hear the war stories at a lunch in a nice place when they have those board meetings. It's not because he was a banking expert. Nonetheless, he's subject to that liability. And that's just one high-profile example that, that people may have already heard of. It bothers me that we have to go and defend so many nuances of our existence in business. I mean, it just, it, it, it just bothers me philosophically. But let's talk a little bit about common fatal flaws, and there are a lot of them here. I mean, you got a list to die for here. Let's talk about the first one, which I think is a killer issue, and that is many of us like to have our autos or cars owned by our company. So if you're an LLC, S-Corp, C-Corp, whatever, you like to have your car because you think that the deduction's worth it. Ike, you're starting to make me feel like the deduction is not worth it. It is our professional opinion that it certainly is not. And this is again part of part of the question that you know that we go through with every client is how many vehicles do you have? And where are they titled? What we routinely see is that CPAs out there and correctly advise clients to lease or purchase vehicles through their business and in many cases not only the business owner but in some cases his or her spouse as well. So it's not only the doctor's car but it might be his wife's SUV as well. Uh, and they have those vehicles leased or purchased through the business in order to obtain the tax deduction. Unfortunately what you have also done from my perspective is taken the most dangerous activity that you do repeatedly on a daily basis and link the activity of piloting your 5,000 pound missile in and out of everybody else's and you've linked that to the most valuable thing you own, hmm. your business. So let me ask you Steve, if you were a personal injury attorney and were suing someone, would you rather have your client killed or injured by Steve Savant, Dr. Savant, or Savant and Associates Plastic Surgery Incorporated. Well, first of all, I didn't know I was being elevated to doctoral status, <laughs> and I'll take it. But I, I yes, I mean, I, I totally see where you're coming from. I do not want people coming all the way into the deep pocket issues of a business that's thriving that you may want to give to your children. That's exactly correct. And, and, and you know, a lot of litigation is motivated by the plaintiff and their attorney's perception of the collectability of the defendant. In plain English, Lawyers chase the deep pocket, mm -hmm. and the corporate pocket is perceived as being deepest. There's a simple solution mm -hmm. that we suggest and said. Talk to your CPA, get the vehicle in your own name, get it heavily insured, mm -hmm. get the umbrella that you mentioned in an earlier segment, and take a car allowance instead. Don't tie that liability to your most valuable asset, the golden goose that, that you're trying to protect. Well, I think that is a, I mean, there's so many fatal flaws here that we see common every day, and this has got to be number one. I mean, I don't think there's anything closer than that. When we come back tomorrow, we're going to talk about a lot of things that actually talk about the things we actually sell on this show. Life insurance in a hazardous environment. i got to tell you, that will be to die for. Remember, you can watch this show and all our shows by going out to our website at thebiz.tv. And just remember, you can sign up on our homepage. That's the buzz on the biz for today. You're in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.